give us the topic of re-engineering education in Ghana, um, and I thought about it, I felt that you know, we need to approach this with a lot of humility. Because the, the challenge before us is a very big one. If you look around the world, in every country, the educational system is the biggest system running in the country. Even a country like the United States, which spends far more money, say, in its military than the next 10 countries combined, half of the government employees in the United States are working in the educational system. Half of them. So what we're talking about in this room is the single biggest system in Ghana. And it's the same everywhere, everywhere in the world. We're not, we're not alone. And changing big systems is hard. It's not, it's not an easy thing. For those of us who studied engineering, changing any system is difficult. And the larger the system is, the more complex it is, um, the more unwieldy it is. So that is sort of the, the basis from which we should proceed. An understanding that we're dealing with the largest, most complex system in the Republic of Ghana. It's a very big task. Now, to change a big system like this, um, you need to be careful. And the way to approach it is to do some experimentation. You have to run some smaller experiments with parts of the system, find out which experiments are working well and showing results, and then you scale the things that work well quickly. And I liked the example of scaling exponentially, which means you find the things that are working and you double the participation in those things every year. And over time, you'll get your exponential growth. Okay. Now, the question of scale um, is also in some ways complex, but also simple. There's only two ways to achieve scale, two ways. One is the government, and the second is the market. Individual organizations cannot achieve the scale that a country needs. There's no way SOS or a Chessy or Ligon can scale to meet the challenge of the country. None of these institutions individually can do it. And if they try, they'll fail and the country with it. So the way we do scale is a government system with money from taxes and so on, the people, and the market. And the market is lots of individual private entities, for-profit and non-profit operating. Um, so when you think about gov government systems, the market, then you, then you realize that the way to build a system, and you know, the planet has a very successful system called the ecosystem. And it is sort of this organic natural system. It is incredibly resilient. And I would argue that that is the model that we should, we should approach education with, an ecosystem's view of the challenge. Now, a resilient ecosystem has four or five characteristics. The first is diversity. You have diversity of species. The second is modularity. So the system is such that if one species fails, the whole system doesn't collapse because other species survive. The third is buffers, right? So buffers of water, buffers of food, buffers of DNA and seed and eggs and so on. The fourth, rapid feedback loops. And the fifth is active and reactive adaptation to change, right? So we should look at this as an ecosystem's problem. And we need to have a diversity of schools, private, 
public, from the primary, the secondary, the tertiary level, and they should all be different, right? No five universities in this country should look the same. If we actually achieve that, we would have achieved a system that is not resilient to shocks, right? We need modularity. So, for example, if a university grows to, say, you know, 10,000 students, 20,000 students, it needs to modularize into colleges. You need to sort of have components that are coupled but can decouple easily if you need to. You need to be actively seeking feedback, so measuring performance, and then, so that's the reactive feedback loops, and then you need active and reactive adaptation, and that is basically research and innovation. You need to be constantly trying things and, and, and making changes. So, <laughs> re-engineering Ghanaian education. I would say, let's go back to what I said with experiments. I would suggest a few experiments that we ought to do. In other words, take two, or th two to four schools of the same caliber, Chimota, Infantipim, and so on. You try one approach in two of them and a different approach in the two, the other two. See what works, which is yielding the best results, and then start to replicate that. Um, now, what are some things that we should try? I would say that the BECE needs to experiment with reducing the number of subjects that are tested. We're, we're testing too many things. And, and this is not to say that we shouldn't teach a lot of things. We should. We should teach art and music and science and so on and so forth. But we should test maybe three things. Math, English, science. Now, what this buys you is also the testing can be done more quickly. The grading can be done more quickly. The BECE system costs the senior high school system half a year because it's, it's testing so many subjects and it, it takes forever to come up with the grades. The second thing I would say is, why not add more days in the school year? Not more years, but more days in the school year. Why not add more hours in the school day? So you basically, all these three experiments I'm suggesting have to do with increasing time on task in an efficient way, which Ernest would appreciate as an economist. Um, why not start intensive English and math from day one? And by the way, why not do some of this stuff outside of the educational system? What if every television show had captions? If it's a tree language show, it's this tree language captions. If it's English, English captions. And it's the law. So every TV program has to do this. Get the whole country reading every day, right? Now, and let it run, and let it run for a couple of decades and see what happens. And we know China did this and it was very successful, right? So just a few thoughts, but I think we need to look at this as a complex, difficult task. We need to experiment figure out which experiments work, and then we scale up on those things.